for the college football playoffs, we now have we had five conferences called Power Five conferences, and if you played those pa- in those conferences, you were on the upper half of FBS. Now, FBS is a subdivision in football that is the best conference or the best teams that the best 134 teams per se. Now you have FCS, which is also Division One, which is like the lower half, kind of the smaller schools, the ones that don't get enough funding. Well, yeah. FBS has your Power Five, your Group of Five, and your Independents. Now. The Power Five is the places where you want to go. The money makers, the people that win everything, the people that get a lot of money. You rarely see group of five teams. We saw Cincinnati not too long ago make the college football playoffs, which was unheard of. They were like one of the first teams. And then, of course, we had like historic Boise State teams back in the day. But now it's even more interesting because every year the top 12 teams is 11, could be, could be, could be less. 11 probably power five power four schools because we only have four conferences now power conferences yeah. and then that 12th spot is going to be a lock in for the best group of five school in the country so and now that's, that's guaranteed that's guaranteed now a group of five team yes that Cincy team was loaded a group of five team always makes the college football playoff at that 12th spot because as we saw last year when the best group of five team went to the new year's six bowl Oregon beat them 45 to six. So they're not going to give too much power to the group of five schools. But now you ask, okay, well, what does the one through four teams get? Because now we have this precedent set where the best four teams were always making the college football playoffs ever since the college football playoff existed. It was always the top four teams, one and four played together, and then two and three played together. And whoever won that was in the national championship. Well, now the one through four seeds get a bye week. And those one through four teams are each power conference winners. So whoever wins the SEC, whoever wins the Big Ten, whoever wins the Big 12, and whoever wins the uh, ACC. I don't know why I was blanking right there. But what's interesting is that the way the college football playoffs, and they're still selection committee, the way that they will decide is based off conference losses so if you lose more depending even though missouri and sec school would probably be a lot better than any acc or big 12 school that that is next in line than the number one they're probably going to get snubbed because they will most definitely have more conference losses going into the college football playoffs that's that's for the five through 11 that's for five through 11 Okay. Those are your non-lock-in ones. Obviously, yeah. one through four is locked in. Twelve is locked in as a group of five. All your conference winners, and then five through eleven is strictly on who has the best conference play in football. Now, I'm going to go through. Really, I have yes, and I have graphics. I have I could yap about this for a long time, but I'm going to try to make it short just so we get our hour talk in, and then maybe I will kind of give it talk about it on shows to come. But yeah, now. I have prepared for this. I have graphics. I have tickers. My number one team. Well, actually, I'll go through twelve. I'll go. I'll go twelve to twelve one, up, yeah. and then I will have a graphic to show it so nobody gets confused. Now, twelve is your group of five schools. So I was looking at schedules. Obviously, there's precedent here on who played last year. Liberty was twenty four ranked going into play in Oregon in the Fiesta Bowl. Got absolutely demolished. But when I was looking at schedules, Liberty's cakewalk of a schedule. They're probably going to go undefeated again, even though there's probably better group of five schools just because none of them will go undefeated. Liberty will probably go undefeated with Caden, Caden Salter, who is just fantastic. He's a top 10 ranked in college football, the game and uh, Liberty will be that 12 spot for group of five. Like uh, even I, I think that someone like Memphis, a team like Memphis is better than Liberty, but and in my buddy and I were talking about this before we started, the only reason Memphis won't make the best group of five school is because Memphis specifically schedules power for conference play play so that they can kind of show people who they are. But Liberty okay. has a cakewalk of a schedule. They play even worse group of five schools and maybe even SCS schools and just cakewalk. So they will, I think they'll be undefeated okay. and go into it. Makes sense. So, so my number 11 going into this, I said, I want this team to be number 11. And it's because some people are like, no, there can't be. There's a new regime in Alabama, Alabama gets the 11 spot just barely with two losses in the SEC because now we've added Texas and Oklahoma, which makes it a lot, 
a lot harder right. to go through. Now, I can't remember Alabama's schedule, which I should have all these pulled up, which I will look it up real quick because I want to ch- tell you specifically who I have them losing to. And there's some teams where I have losses that I just feel like they'll lose where they might not lose at all. Well, Alabama plays Georgia. I think that's a loss. And then they yep. play Missouri. They play Tennessee. And they play Tennessee at Rocky Top. And it's difficult because we can go, do we – do we know if Tennessee's going to be good? Because Tennessee's always frauds, to be honest. They never, they never become what they're Milton. supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, Joe Milton is playing pretty good in the preseason, so we'll see what he can do. But I felt Alabama was going to lose to Georgia. That was it. I mean, and then I keep looking. They play LSU at Death Valley, and for some reason, Ooh. that game is. I think Alabama is a better team. Honestly, they have Jalen Milrow. They have a new head coach, but I don't. They're bringing a lot of a lot of pieces back to a team that they had that went to the Rose Bowl and went into overtime with the national championship champions from last year. So for me, it was like, okay, they might be at the bottom. They'll get two SEC losses, and that'll be it for that'll be Bama because I don't feel like a team with three losses, unless it comes down to it, will make the college football playoffs. So if we keep going to number 10, I have Oregon going number 10, and they lose to they have to they're now in the Big Ten. So they have to play teams like Ohio State, they have to play teams like Penn State and stuff like that, which I had them losing to Ohio State and Michigan, which I'm gonna tell you right now, the national champions from last year do not make the college football playoffs. They don't make it. I have them snubbed. I don't I don't like Michigan this year. Their defense will still be pretty good. But Oregon, for some reason, has never been able to play against a defense that wasn't Pac-12. We've seen it a lot. I mean, even with Marcus Mariota, back in the day when Marcus Mariota won the Heisman, guess what happened? He went to the national championship and lost to Ohio State. So even when Oregon has this top-tier offense, their defense, it just they just can't play against other defense, competing defenses. So Oregon's going to have two losses in the Big Ten for me, and then it gets me to my number nine pick, which I hate to say it, but Lane Kiffin has been doing good things at Oxford. He's been doing, <laughs> like, strange things. He's been bringing people to Oxford that have said that they never wanted to visit Mississippi in their entire lives. He he, he is he has the best transfer portal. He's been go, doing some crazy things. His offseason looks great, and I hate to hype him up, but this is Ole Miss's probably best chance to win a national championship. So Ole Miss goes number nine, two SEC losses, like I said. They're going to lose two. And then I get to number eight, which is a non-conference play person. Now, we have three independent schools in the country right now. One of them happens to be pretty dang good, and yeah. that's Notre Dame. Notre Dame has a pretty cupcake oh, schedule. Yeah. Now they, they play Florida State, and I have them beating Florida State. I, I just I because I think Florida State's you can't tell me that the team that Florida State has now wasn't the team that played Georgia. Because guess what? Even though you sat all your starters against Georgia, all them guys left. So, so what this you is had, the team. This is the team. Yeah. Because all them starters sat who were gonna leave anyways. And so now you have all the people that were left to just have Georgia's just their 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 uh, wrath of not being making the college football playoffs, and then they had the biggest college football playoff deficit ever. So Notre Dame actually they play they have a cupcake almost a cupcake schedule. They play Florida State. I have them I have them winning against Florida State, but I have them losing. Now I have them losing against A and M Week One. A&M's always really? overhyped, but for some reason that A&M, that A&M team just seems like they could go in and beat Notre Dame because guess what? Nobody has their wheels rolling. There's no preseason to college football. You right. you raw dog everything week one. It is purely <laughs> raw dog. So whenever you have somebody come in and play an SEC school first game of the season, now Florida State did pretty good against LSU. I will give them that. Florida State did really good against LSU. But more times than none, SEC team comes on top. So I'm giving I'm giving that a loss, and I think they lose to Louisville at Notre Dame because that's just a team they've always struggled with. They struggled with them last year. They lost to Louisville last year. So I think they lose two games, and we keep going backwards to number seven. Now, number seven gets interesting 
because now you have people that have gone second place in their conferences. And you look at it and you say, okay, well, if somebody in like the ACC or the Big 12, is that second place person better than somebody that's in the SEC? And the answer may be no. But because we have a win-loss column, that changes right. everything. Right. Because now you have teams like, for my number seven, Oklahoma State, who's in the Big 12, who goes 11-2 and two on the season and, and loses. Much better. Yeah. It looks a lot better than the SEC school. Well, they lost their conference championship and, a, and against a team in the regular season. So now you have people that have 11 wins that might have only lost one in the regular season go to the postseason, the championship, and then lose their conference championship but still have more wins like Ole Miss and Bama. And on paper, they look better because of that win-loss column. Right. So number seven is my second place to Big 12 team, Oklahoma State, which actually their schedule looks like a cupcake schedule, but they're not my Big 12 winners. Now, number six is my second place for Big 10, Penn State, who they have to play Ohio State. I think they lose Ohio State twice. Losing the regular yeah. season, losing the conference championship because you, you don't, don't have think divisions Michigan anymore. Makes... No, Michigan doesn't make it because Michigan not only has a new head coach, but is still on blast for everything Jim Harbaugh did when he was at Michigan. And the only people that have to like feel that punishment is the people that are still left standing at Michigan. Plus, guess what happened? J.J. McCarthy left. Blake Corum left. Your entire offense yeah. basically left Michigan. Your number one wide receiver left. So unless they can pull something out of their buttholes in this conference realignment and show me something, I have them snubbed. They're not making the college football playoff. Now, right now they're number nine, but that's purely because they won the national championship. But number five, before I get to my top four, yes. is um, SEC runner-up Texas. I think they lose to Georgia in the regular season, and they lose to Georgia oh. in the championship, which is something that Georgia has struggled with. Georgia has might have beaten Bama in the regular season, goes on the championship, loses to Bama. Now they're out the playoffs. Happened last year. Right. So it's almost a one and one thing. But now, now Georgia's hungry. They got snubbed last season. Georgia's not going to let anybody stand by Georgia. Because guess what? Guess what Georgia has? Just about every dang person in the city that was on their team last year coming back. So Georgia is hungry. They're ready to eat. So they're going to win the SEC. I think they're an undefeated team. But number four brings me to my Big 12 winner, Arizona. Arizona showed me something that I can't forget last year. They took Mississippi State to overtime with Noah Fafita as a true freshman. Noah Fafita looks great. I was looking at uh, some of Noah Fafita's numbers. He single-handedly did a lot of things for Arizona. They, okay. they were 16th rank, won their bowl game last season, 16th rank in the country. Arizona's looking good. And their, their big opponents is Kansas State and Oklahoma State. And I, I, I think they beat Oklahoma State in the championship. I think they might lose to them in the regular season. So I have Arizona, number four. My third, my third place pick is ACC. My ACC winner is Clemson. I'm picking Clemson. I'm a miles from Clemson. It is a little biased, but but I have them losing one game. Okay. And it's not the Florida State. I I I don't I, I think they beat Florida State. And I think they beat Florida State in the championship if it goes down to it, which makes me believe that Florida State will have three losses, which is why they I don't have Florida to State SMU. in the top ten. But no, they don't lose to SMU. Dang the it. thing is, Clemson has had a history and a tradition now where they play somebody week one every year. And that somebody just so happens to be the hungriest team in the country, Georgia. So they oh. lose to Georgia week one. But they pick it back up. They beat everybody. Like, they don't play any – they play NC State, which scares me. But they really don't play anybody but Florida State all year. And they beat Florida State to me because Florida State are frauds. Listen to me, Florida State fans, you are frauds. You're going to do sit here and tell me that the people you have starting now were not the people you had play against Georgia and lost 65-3. to three. Okay? That's what's going to happen. You're going to have people that are going to – have their freaking – they're going to be exposed. And we're going to see Florida State might drop out of the top 25. They're, they're getting snubbed wow. again. They're getting snubbed again. And Florida State fans, you can cry on you want. Recruit better. Recruit better. You let DJ – you brought DJ in. You brought DJ in, which I, I, I applaud it. But guess where DJ came from? 
Clemson University. So you're just taking clips and scraps, bringing them to your own team, calling them a starter in hopes that you can repair something you lost last year from being snubbed and losing 65 to 3 to the hungriest team in the country. They lost 65 to 3. Yes. The biggest po- and I'm almost certain it was 65 to 3. I can look it up real quick. Was that to Georgia? That was to Georgia. Because they were like, oh, why did why did we miss the playoffs? Yeah, they got mad because they missed the playoffs. They were the they are the only team in history to be a power, a part of a power conference and not make the playoffs undefeated. And they go in and play Georgia. Oh, well, all the starters sit out, lose 63 to 3 against Georgia. In the bowl game. In the bowl game. It was in the orange bowl. And you're gonna tell me that the people you still got layers to a cake. A, a foot, college football roster yeah. is a layered cake. It's deep. When that deep. top layer layer's eaten off and you got those people right now that are playing in that bowl game against Georgia, this layer ends up being the top layer again. And it's right now, Florida next year. State, yeah. that's your starters now. And when they go in and play somebody like Georgia again, guess what's going to happen? They're going to lose 63-3. to three, And then what's going to happen, Florida State fans? You're going to be upset crying. You're going to be crying again just like you were last year. So get get that coin out of my face. I don't want to hear it. Florida State's getting snubbed. Number two, undefeated. I hate to say it, Kenny, if you're watching, Ohio State goes number two, undefeated. They beat Penn State two times to become undefeated and 13-0 season. And then Georgia's your number one team in the country. They become 13-0. And if Georgia wins it all, we might possibly see the greatest college football season ever because Georgia had to beat Texas twice. They had to beat Alabama. They had to beat all these teams to get to where they are just to be ranked number one. If they win the whole thing, that might be the greatest season we've ever seen. Right now, it is the greatest season we've ever seen becoming undefeated. But if you've missed it, all I've said was yapping. There it is right there. All the rankings and the records, it's all right there. Everything's – you want to ask it, it's right there. But let's get into a graphic I had that Noah made, if yeah. he's still watching. Graphic – for the college football playoffs right here, it shows you everything. Let me take this banner off. Yep. And right now we have everything set up the way it's supposed to be. Your one through four seeds get a bye. And then your 12th seed plays five, nine plays eight, 11 plays six. You know, it's yep. like a regular thing. But right. the thing that's to point out is that five and 12 school, that five and 12 thing plays that number four team next. It doesn't because get reseeded. It doesn't get reseeded because even though the 12th seed might win, that number five school or that number 12 school to go against that number four seeded Arizona, they might either have the hardest game of the season or the easiest game of the season, <laughs> depending on how that game goes out. Yeah. So this is exactly how it's supposed to look. Your number one seed plays your the winner of your eight and nine, which is interesting because now you kind of have harder games because it doesn't get reseeded. If Liberty were to beat Texas, Georgia doesn't automatically play Liberty, even though they're the number one right. seed. They play whoever wins that eight and nine seeded team, which I kind of like a little bit better because you you won't have frauds going to the national championship. These are people that have been in the trenches who have not only went through World War One and World War Two, but they went through World War Three to get to the college football national championship. And we're gonna see it in just a second. So I have completely compiled scores of who I think are going to win in these rounds, and I'm gonna share them with you. See what you think. And we will go from there. Let me take a sip of water because I'm yapping a bunch. <laughs> I, now, I, I, really to do, make it- I do agree, though, Connor, that I like that it, it adds a little layer of difficulty that you don't want Georgia to cakewalk. Um, like that's that's what's been great about the conference championships is it's that last little test before the playoffs. And I think this does give you an extra test because hypothetically Georgia could have to play Ole Miss, and Texas a third time before they get to the national championship. Exactly. And it's interesting because you're not going to have frauds in the national championship. These are guys, like I said, that have been in the trenches. They're going to win multiple top games to get to where they are going to be. I mean, before we had people like TCU making the national championship. And guess what happened when TCU played Georgia? They lost like 60-3. to They got cakewalk. They, that was the original word. It's the worst deficit in national championship history, but it, it was the worst deficit in postseason history until Georgia came and played Florida State. 
Now, <laughs> I have scores that I have. I mean, you can tell me what you think about them. If you disagree with them, that's fine. You cut me off. You tell me what you think. If you agree with them, you can nod your head, say, mm-hmm, Connor, I agree. Or just do whatever you want, MJ. But mm-hmm. this first game <laughs> is number 12 seed Liberty, number 5 seed Texas. I have Texas beating them 49-10 to 10 in this game. It's going to be a blowout just like we saw Oregon and uh, Liberty. The only reason I have Liberty winning, having more points on the board than they did against Oregon is because there's a little bit more to lose here. You lose, you're out of contention in the national championship. You lost a uh, New Year's Six Bowl last year. You just lost your bowl game. You there wasn't anything after it. So that I have them losing forty nine to ten. What do you think about it? You're I, okay with it? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't. There's no way on this God given earth that Liberty, Liberty beats Texas. Texas. Yeah, I, I don't even think they challenge. In, in this next game is interesting. I hate giving Ole Miss props, but Ole Miss plays Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame's still a little fraudulent. So I have Ole Miss beating Notre Dame 30 to 17. And I, think, I just I think they're fraudulent. I I tend to agree. I mean, I being in Chicago and that was all we had were allowed to watch on TV on Saturdays. <laughs> um I've watched plenty of Notre Dame football and it never impressed me. They've never had a good quarterback. Um, they just, they can't keep up. That's where I will agree that SEC teams are better just inherently. Like I think the majority of SEC teams are just inherently better than Notre Dame. So Kenny gets his little, uh, outback bowl again against <laughs> Alabama and Penn state. And the last time these two teams met, I don't know what the score was. I'm not even going to do that because I don't even remember what the score was because I don't want to say something wrong, but Bama and Penn state play each other. And I'm inclined to believe that this will be a blowout. But because of my own emotions and say that it's SEC versus Big Ten, I actually have this being a close game. Because guess what's on the table if Penn State wins two games? They get to go in and try to beat Ohio State and not get sweeped three times. So there's a lot to win in this game for Penn State because they can go and beat Ohio State and go to the national championship. Is that a host game for Penn State? No, these are these are um, New Year's like these are bowl games like we saw like New Year's Six bowls, okay. but uh, it, they're technically hosted. I mean, it says oh uh, the higher it's technically hosted, but it's still going to be in that neutral site. You know, like the Sugar Bowls in New Orleans okay, so or the Rose are, Bowls in Are any of these at location, or are they all neutral site? Um, I I I'm almost certain that all of them are new. I don't know the the quarterfinals for sure is neutral. The first round is actually interesting because I think I because I think it's saying because there's four there's the four or is it six? There's six New Year's six, six. game, but, but there's still... going to be eight games in total. So I I think they're bringing in like okay yeah yeah okay so that is the first round's hosted by the higher seed and okay, then it goes so in to like that the case... New Year's. It's right, it's right. Because look, you have four of the New Year's six bowls in the quarterfinals and two yeah. of the rest of them in the semifinals. So it makes sense. Okay. Because okay. it equals okay, out okay. So we got so, that. So I'm not going to lie. I think it does get a lot closer with Penn State being at home because that's going to be a cold game. So I have it close, but I have Bama barely inching and they win 23 to 20. I mean, barely I, if, I, if I had to put money on it again, like way far in advance, I would probably put my money on Bama. But again, I think that home field advantage really does out of any of the teams on this list. I think Bama or Penn State in the first round has probably the best home field advantage. And that may be true. But what I've seen from Bama now. Obviously, that's old they, Bama. Didn't, they didn't that's lose a Bama. lot. They lost their head coach, which is a big hit. But they really didn't lose that much. They still have their starting quarterback, Jalen Milrow. And the things I've seen from him are are abnormal. They're he's just, a stud. He's a stud. They are like not human. He's so, disgusting in college football, I, by the way. I, yeah, he is. And I, I, I want to say he, he wins a playoff game because he's going to be hungry too. Think about it. You lost in overtime to the, the last year's national champions. Obviously, oh, people game. are going to say, look, that could that should have been your national championship if I'm if I'm being honest because you have people saying look they competed with Michigan the person that just went out and won everything that we're hungry and took them to overtime to a team that really that was kind of put together with 
jigsaw pieces laying around to try to make a puzzle. Yeah. Now, Nick Saban, we knew it was his last year. He really didn't try. He just really didn't try. He he just tried to put together what he already had and see if something stuck, and it did. He went to overtime with Michigan, ended up picking a horrible – you know, that's why I think that play was picked because Nick Saban was just done. He picked on um, fourth and goal against really? a top Michigan defense. He picked a QB sneak or QB draw with Jalen Milrow on a fourth and goal on like the six-yard line or the two – it was like – so comparable to that really? and it just ruined their season and so i think nick saban was done but you got almost the market's best head coach who's already been to a national championship last year washington's head coach kellen DeBoer. he's been to a national championship so look and jack thinks his oc was notre game guy and and that's probably that could be it too but they, they, they have a lot. To, they're hungry. They're hungry. So the hungrier team's going to go out. And I know Penn State's hungry too. But Alabama has a lot to prove with Nick Saban gone. Penn State has lost to Ohio State twice. So for them to lose against Bama is just like, okay, well, Penn State just can't compete at a top level. We're going to say that. But for Bama to lose against Penn State would be, okay, well, without Nick Saban, Bama can't do anything. So these, these people have to, to set their own mark now. Because they have they have they have proved as each of their teams. So we go to we go to Oregon and Oklahoma State. I don't want to spend too much time on just the first round. Yeah. And I have Oregon beating them 38 to 21. Because I don't Oklahoma State just has a run game. That's all they have. I don't see them having much of I don't see them having much of passing game. I don't see their defense being stellar against Oregon. I just have Oregon putting up Pac 12 numbers against them and 38 points. <laughs> So here's my first round scores. It's on the ticker at the bottom if you missed it. I'm going to go to slide two to update you. And then we have kind of the the next games. And uh, so we, we said before that that fifth-ranked Texas team will play that four-seed Arizona team. And so how will that game pan out? I've seen stuff from Noah Fafita, but he just isn't like a super stellar postseason quarterback. He won't be. He's still young. He still has a lot to learn. I think Texas cakewalks Arizona. Uh, 42 to 27. I have them winning 42 to 27. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it's close. Now, this is what's interesting because Ole Miss comes in, plays against Georgia. Ole Miss lost to Georgia in the regular season. Can Georgia go ahead and beat another team twice? Can they do it again? And I think the answer is yes. But I think it's a close – I think it's not too close, but it's a closer game than we think. I think Georgia – in the in the in the half, the half is super comparable because Ole Miss and Georgia will probably be like twenty four to twenty one or something. They'll be really close. Then once half happens, Georgia just eats. Georgia wins this game thirty eight yep. to twenty four. That's it. They they beat Ole Miss. Uh, Lane Kiffin's time, uh, his his window would have won a national championship is over. In my opinion, this is the best year they got. And Georgia just keeps eating. They keep eating. Alabama and Clemson play. When's the last time you've heard Alabama play Clemson, MJ? Uh, wasn't that the national championship? Two times, three times maybe in the national championship. Now nah, twice they lost one, and um, they won one against Bama. So we've seen this before. They are one and one against each other in the national championship in recent years. But we have an 11th seed Alabama taking on a three seed Clemson. This game's close, MJ. This there's a lot of fire here. This is the this is the the rock paper scissors last round. This is me and you playing rock paper scissors. We both we both won one. I beat your yep. I had scissors. I beat your paper. I had scissors again. You beat it with rock. This is it, MJ. We got we got the last round of rock paper scissors. I got Clemson getting on top of Bama here, thirty five to thirty one, because I feel like Clemson is also hungry. They have they just keep like Michelle says. It's not that close. It's not that close. <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna be a good sport about it. She's gonna say good luck to Bama. But Clemson comes on top. They have kind of a a more seasoned quarterback. Although I don't think he's better than Jalen Milrow. He's a little bit more seasoned than Jalen Milrow. He's had uh, some tough games too in his career and was able to go on get on top. They beat Notre Dame last year. Like I think Clemson gets on top barely beats Bama 35-31. thirty one. I will I will have to disagree. I don't That's think fine. I because weren't you the one talking about how Clemson's schedule after week one is really easy? 
not necessarily they have to play a 10th ranked Florida State. Like they have to play a 24th ranked NC State. Like they have to play people, but it's not as hard of a schedule as Alabama or something. You know, yeah, I just I just think that Alabama is going to have already played way more hard games. And this oh, yeah. will be the hardest game Clemson has played yet. So if Alabama really does make it to this spot, they've played Georgia. Like they've played all these teams. I don't think Clemson conditioned. scares them. Yeah. Yeah. And so if they really are all that with Milrow and, you know, a hot shot head coach, I just, it's one of those things where I understand it's a different program now, but I still got to go with Bama until I see otherwise. You know what I think, though? I think what's going to happen is Ohio, uh, uh, Alabama is going to be looking at who they're going to play next during this game, which could possibly be Ohio State, and they're going to go, okay, we're going to play Ohio State if we win this game. But they're not going to go into the correct steps. To It happens a lot of the time. It happened when Michigan played TCU and got beat. Yeah. It ha- it happens where you you're look past this team you're playing yeah. and you're you're saying okay well I we want to beat Ohio State in the national championship again because the last time they did it it was fifty two to twenty four it looked ugly so yeah. they want to do it again they just want to beat they want to go against Ohio State real quick I think they lose to Clemson miss the opportunity and just try to say good luck next year and Michelle agrees with me I'm glad she does of course she does but we go to the Oregon Ohio State. And this is a chance for Ohio State to beat Oregon another time because they play in the regular season, and I think they beat Oregon 41-21. to 21. I think it is. I, it's not a close game here. They, 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 Kenny is the epitome of Ohio State's football team, and he is so down about not being in the college football playoff conversation in the most recent years that he is just ready to be there. They are hungry. They they aren't hungry. They're starving, MJ. They are freaking starving like hyenas out in the desert that haven't found anything but sand. They're starving. They've been walking for 40 days and 40 nights, and all they've had in front of them is sand. And once they get to that perfect, perfect palm tree and water, they're going to have to keep marching. And to get there, they got to march through more sand, which is your Oregon Ducks, and they beat Oregon 41 21. I, yeah, I like it. Right. So these are, these are my scores for the quarterfinals. Okay. So okay. let like me it. update you, MJ. Yep. I'll be, I came prepared, so let me update you. Five, one. Now, this is where it gets interesting Texas, Georgia we, for the third time. Texas, Georgia for the third time. That's and you're wild. Here, Has that ever happened before? It has it hasn't happened in college football, but it's happened in the NFL. Right, the team has right, played each other three right. times. But it hasn't happened in college football. No. That's crazy. This is the first time a team has ever played somebody three times in a season, and you're like, okay, well, Georgia's under you know, Georgia winning the first two. Georgia wins the first two, which is uncharacteristic of them because, as I said, they've lost to Alabama last year after right. beating them in the regular season. Right. You're like, okay, there's a lot riding on this game. Georgia could be the first team in history to beat a team three times in a year. But Texas could be finally in the national championship again in 20 years. They could do it with Quinn Ewers driving the helm. But the dilemma here is Georgia, we've seen them in the past three years have two record-breaking historic games they're not scared to break history. They're not no. scared to set records because what's going to happen? Georgia's going to run through Texas. It's going to be a close game, 30 to 27. Georgia's going to win and be the first team to beat a team three times in a season of college football because they're not scared to break records and put their names in the history books. I mean, I like it, but I also would not be surprised if Texas wins. No, I wouldn't like, be surprised to, be, to beat a team three times in one season. That's really hard. It is. That's it's really hard. And I wouldn't be surprised. I also wouldn't be surprised if Georgia lost the conference championship game, wasn't the one seed, and then won the national championship. I wouldn't be surprised. That is perfectly fine because guess what? They have to play worse ranked teams if that's the case. Yeah. If that's the they scenario, could, they have to play They could still basically teams. cakewalk to the same game. And they could, they very they, well could. They'd be five instead of, of one, and they would beat Liberty, 
beat Arizona, and then end up in the same game. So they 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 very if this is true, really what matters is Texas and Georgia being in the conference championship, and then whoever wins gets one, and whoever loses probably still gets five. They might play each other three times no matter what. It could it could happen no matter what. It very well could happen. It could be for the national championship. There is a there is a scenario where they could play each other in the national championship, which is a testament to how dang good the SEC is. Yeah, that's crazy. But but even then, for those two teams to get there, do you understand the amount of competition they would have to play? They wouldn't have to just play the almost the entire SEC. They have to go through and also play teams that are ranked in the top ten in the country to get to the national three times if they're not the one through four seed because only one of them is going to get the bye. But we go to Clemson, Ohio State. What's interesting, these these teams have played each other four times ever. And the last time, Ohio State has only beat Clemson once ever in program history. And it was when Justin Fields was on Ohio State. And they took Clemson out the playoffs to go and lose to Alabama 52-24. to 24. <laughs> <laughs> So, the, Ohio State has the edge on Clemson. And they set a precedent, a really recent precedent. I think the precedent's going to stay, but it's a close game. Clemson wants to beat Ohio State to get them back from last time, but Ohio State wants to go to the dang national championship because it's a freaking 10-year drop. They beat Clemson 24-21. to And in your national championship is Georgia and Ohio State. Oh, baby. For your semifinals. So this is the number, the two okay. best teams in the country, the two undefeated teams in the country. And, Kenny, this will finally shut Kenny up. When these two teams play, because you know what's going to happen. You know what happened last year when Georgia played a non conference team in the Georgia's playoffs? Georgia's going to cakewalk. Do them. you know what happened when Georgia played a non conference team in the playoff the year before that? Talk to him, Connor. Georgia set two, not one, not one. They set a record one season and then set a, a harder, they beat the same record that is so difficult to beat. The year after, they beat people by 60-plus points two years in a row in the postseason. Do you think Georgia is going to let somebody beat them after having that? These guys are hungry. They just got snubbed from the playoffs to potentially go in, and maybe they could have beat Michigan. Maybe, but we will never know. But guess what? We don't have to know because they're going to beat the team that beat Michigan this year. They're going to go in and beat Ohio State 31-20. to They're going to go in and not even give Ohio State a chance. It's not going to be close. Georgia's going to let them think they're going to be on top. Georgia's going to let them let them just play with them a little bit. Kirby Smart, smart. And he knows that if Ryan Day loses this game, it might be over for Ryan Day at Ohio State. So Georgia's going to win, and Georgia becomes your national champions for the fourth time, for the third time in four years. Look at that graphic. Just just take that graphic in. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. I like your analysis. I like the new playoff. I think this is what will finally get some more fans into college football. I think the problem was for so long, some of these bowl games didn't count for anything. And you're seeing postseason play that doesn't count for anything. Let's put some meaning behind it. These are basically professional programs now with all of the money flowing in, with the way they train, with the way they uh, prepare. Every, like, these are professional programs. It may not be the NFL, but these are professional programs. And there needs to be that level of attention and that level of respect for their playoffs. So I love it. Oh, it makes college football that much more exciting. Because even though it, NIL and Transfer Portal did kind of ruin the integrity of the sport, we just had something that almost brought it back to its original form, and that's his 12-team college. Because now, like I said, Anyone's already, it, it could be any. We could see a group of five. Now, the chances of a group of five team beating Georgia, I I, I don't see it happening. But the, some people are, are like that. They like to risk it. Some guys that are on, on riding the group of five train, not me. I don't think that you're in the group of five for a reason, pal. If you're good enough to be in a power right. conference, you'd be in a power conference. Like it's not that difficult. Pe- people yeah, but on any given Saturday. Conference. Yep. I mean, it's it's possible. And like you see it in, in college basketball. Obviously, it's a it's a different sport, but like these teams go on runs during March Madness. 
And I think that's what it's been is nobody's ever been given the opportunity to go on that run. And so the first time that a 12 seed beats the five, we're going to be like, ah, and the first time that a 12 seed wins two games in a row, it's going to happen. Oh yeah. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. But you know who that 12 seed is though. A group of five school. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm yeah, saying. It's, it's like, going to be like the Cinderella point, story every yeah, time. Some, but at some point it's going to happen. I agree. I, I 100% And that's agree. when you're going to hear Texas fans in here like, oh, my goodness, why are we doing this stupid playoff, blah, blah, blah. Brother, you wouldn't even been in the other one because you're number five. You suck. And and Texas, I think they're frauds too. That's why they hadn't Whoa. made one in 20 years. You got the most Whoa. money out of just about any school ever, and you still use it to wipe your butt instead of putting it into your football program. It's just crazy to me that, like, Alabama recruits better in Texas than Texas does. Exactly, like people, and it was a Nick Saban thing. Now it probably won't be as as prominent, yeah. but it's but interesting. Still. It makes the game. There's so many variables in the game, and I I like numbers, and especially I like letters with those numbers. And math algebra was my thing, and I love I love it because now we That's have not, not only a as a variable, B as a variable, and C as a variable, we have the entire alphabet's worth of letters inside we, of a math we got, equation. We got S, too. Oh, we do. And some of these teams do.